Hi, this slide, uh, it's a bit of an overview slide in the sense that it's going to introduce some terms or concepts that I'm going to then dedicate another another following slide to. Um, so let's just get on with really sort of the questions for which the answers will come in later modules. Uh, first of all, what is a black belt nth, first, second, third, fourth degree uh, performance level definition for, for your current job? Uh, so uh, that's a that's a, like a little assignment or quiz and a, a, a brainstorming discussion that any any peer group can have within your job. When we think about black belt nth degree, there are two ways of thinking about it. One is how can I do what we're doing every day more perfectly and more robustly? In other words, if I could cross train everything around here. Then I don't just do one thing, I can fill in for other people. If there's a surge, I can hop on wherever the activity is and help out. Isn't that great? But that's different from transformational change within a functional area. So for example, if I'm thinking about a sales rep, do I work a territory and call on big, medium, small customers and say, let me introduce to you new products to the world. This is called ice cream and it's got a vanilla flavor. And here are the features and benefits of why you ought to stock it and sell to your customers. That would be a, a, a product application, education, demand creation selling. Fast forward, and now they're huge chains and they're buying monstrous amounts of stuff. Walmart, do I go and say, hey, you know, let me, let me tell you about you know vanilla ice cream, as opposed to look, how do we get this entire category of frozen products to and through you at the lowest? total procurement costs with the highest everyday fill rates for customers with no paper, people, errors, whatever. Obviously, that's a, a supply chain, service value, system, solution, sale, sell, which takes a different you know vocabulary, skill set, and so forth, but it's still selling. So can we jump from one level of a game to a next, which might mean reskilling or redefining the function that we're doing? Next question is what percent of us currently can self-author? In other words, oh, I get mastery. I've done that multiple times at different places and I have total confidence I can do it again. Uh, to look at levels of the game here, we might say, first of all, can we find good worker bees? These are people who are, you know, younger, nice, solid people. They're, they, they're willing to try to be a cog in a corporate machine. Uh, when they come to work, they're on time. We tell them what to do and they stay steadily focused. Uh, they listen carefully and they try to follow well and they socially get along with people. I mean, that, that, you know, we're not asking, they're not sort of saying, well, how good I'm, what, how good am I currently, what I'm doing and what would be a 10 and how do I get there and so forth. They're just doing what they're told and they're steady performers. So what percent of the population fits that? Because some people clearly can't stay focused, don't follow very well, are, are, at odds with everybody all the time, uh, you know, so they're not necessarily good worker bees. The next level would be self-authoring where there are worker bee who says, oh, now I want to step back and look at what I'm doing and, and figure out how to do what I'm doing better and improve and, and do it on my own, be a self-starter. So self-authoring self-starters would be a next level. Then comes transformational learning. Look, I learned how to do everything in the warehouse, and now I want to learn how to do everything in inside sales. Some of it transfers. In other words, product's product, and I've seen it, touched it, smelled it. I've worked at the counter. I've picked up the vocabulary of the place and so forth. I know how to fill out the forms. I know where the bathroom are, all that sort of stuff. But obviously, there's a whole additional set of stuff that I've got to learn to do this next job well. you know. But because I've learned how to learn here, level two, I can do it here. I know I can do it. And my supervisor knows what, that's why I got promoted, not because of what the fact that I was brilliant in the warehouse, but that I learned how to learn when I was in the warehouse. Um, the, uh, we're going to look at some survey results that suggest that basically when you look at the workforce in America, historically, not enough people have moved up to these higher levels. And in an information economy, where we have to do more self-management and we have to listen and be more flexible to solve sort of one-off custom or semi-custom solutions. Uh, corporations, because the schools aren't doing it, need to figure out how to 
uh, improve their employees learning how to learn skill sets. Um, so that's a key thing. And I might add here from a, from a just if you're raising kids, you might tell, say to your children that 10 years from now, if they choose to live in the United States, 50% of the jobs that will exist don't exist today. They'll be solving problems that haven't been defined today, and they'll be using new tools that haven't been developed yet, and they will be the better jobs, but they will not be able to get them unless they become really good at learning how to learn. So there's an extra incentive for doing that. So that, those are over, over, overview questions about the mastery path. Let's look at some of those more specific uh, topic answers.